A few hundred dollars of consumer-grade hardware is all that's standing in the way of you tapping into satellites and reading people's texts, listening to their phone calls, and even spying on military communications. Also in your hacking news roundup, holding toddlers to ransom goes badly wrong, and is your mouse spying on you? But first, half of the data transmitted by these things is unencrypted, apparently. It's long been known that the security of satellite communication is questionable. Here's a warning by the NSA from three years ago, advising of unfixed vulnerabilities and a general lack of encryption. But exactly how big of a problem we have on our hands hasn't been clear, well, until now. Researchers got curious, so they put together a setup consisting of off-the-shelf parts. Nothing expensive or hard to get. This is all consumer-grade gear costing just a few hundred dollars. Then they simply scan the sky. From their location in North America, the researchers were able to grab data from dozens of satellites. And this is totally passive, by the way. You just point the dish at the sky and download the data. There's no authentication, and importantly, there's no hacking involved here at all. And the results were somewhat disturbing. T-Mobile was a pretty big offender here, which shouldn't be too surprising given their track record on security. The researchers were able to quite literally grab plain text SMSs and raw voice call contents. From just a nine-hour recording, they observed thousands of phone calls and messages and were able to grab all the juicy metadata. From AT&T, they grabbed users' raw internet traffic. From a Mexican telecoms company, they grabbed the plain text contents of users' VoIP calls. In-flight Wi-Fi is also at risk. The researchers were able to grab the browsing data of passengers. But given, of course, most websites add their own layer of encryption, your data here is safe. Well, apart from DNS lookups, which leak whatever spicy websites you happen to be browsing. Walmart apparently uses satellite links. Researchers observed unencrypted logins to their inventory management system, leaking plain text credentials, but also, remarkably, the contents of internal corporate emails. The Mexican government and military is also on the list, with researchers downloading data on law enforcement operations, narcotics activities, and even real-time military object telemetry, which I'm guessing refers to the movement of aircraft and ships. Overall, 50% of the satellite links that were surveyed contained clear text traffic. But given the Earth is not in fact flat, only satellites in view of North America could be tested, so the rest of the world has escaped scrutiny on this occasion. The problem here, or at least part of the problem, is that by default, these things do not encrypt data. They're just relay stations. Very big and expensive Wi-Fi repeaters in space, so to speak. So if you send them unencrypted data, they will just relay that unencrypted encrypted data. Many satellite vendors do offer encryption capabilities, but this often comes at an extra cost, so many organizations will see this as optional and totally skip it. But you can't blame the satellites here any more than you can blame an Ethernet cable for not encrypting your data. It's on the user to implement their own end-to-end -end encryption. The findings of the research were disclosed to the affected organizations. T-Mobile in particular was quick to enable encryption after they were given a heads up, but there's no word on anyone else. This is a classic example of security through obscurity, as in just hoping your system is complicated enough that someone won't go to the effort of figuring out how it works. But in some cases, that approach did kind of work. The researchers weren't able to decode some data because it used some proprietary protocol that they just didn't understand. But that doesn't mean the next guy to come along won't have more luck. The good news is that the vast majority of the internet never even touches a satellite, but rather gets pipes through a huge network of undersea cables. Satellites only pick up the slack when a really long cable isn't so practical. I'll make sure to link the full research down in the description. And also linked down below is today's sponsor, Delete Me. Ever Googled yourself and found your full name, address, and phone number listed on some sketchy people search site? Welcome to the world of data brokers, a delightful bunch of rather shady companies that quietly scrape your data from a whole variety of sources before bundling it up and selling it on to anyone willing to pay. A practice which is totally legal, by the way. But Delete Me can help you fight back. Just complete a quick profile so Delete Me knows what to look for. Then within seven days, they'll compile a personalized report detailing what they found. And and best of all, Delete Me automatically requests removal of the data on your behalf. And so long as you stay subscribed, they'll keep checking and keep removing, periodically creating new reports so you can keep tabs on the whole process. And if you find your data on a site that Delete Me can't by default remove data from, you can shoot off a custom request to your personal privacy advisor, an actual real human person, by the way, who will make it their mission to have your data deleted. Just this year, Wirecutter named Delete Me as their top 
pick for data removal services. Delete Me is giving you all 20% off their eligible plans with my link in the description. Delete Me is also international, serving multiple countries. Just make sure to click the correct link in the description to take back control of your data today. Next up, cyber criminals have learned the hard way that you don't go after children. Kiddo is a global chain of nurseries, with quite a few of them right here in the UK. But along came Radiance Group, a brand new ransomware gang. They bought access to a Kiddo employee's computer from some other cyber criminal and used it to access Kiddo's family account. Family is a platform that some nurseries use to handle all the data they have on their children. You can track attendance, write reports, it's an all-in-one solution. And Kiddo's account was now in the hands of Radiance, who rather predicted exported as much data as they could from it. They posted to their dark web leak site, groveling about how Kiddo wasn't paying the ransom, but then they started leaking the stolen data, names, dates of birth, and even photos of some of the 8,000 children's data they'd stolen. And by the way, the pixelating in this screenshot, that was done by me. Radiant had exposed these kids to all kinds of internet creepers and caused this story to totally blow up in mainstream media. BBC News contacted Radiant, asking if they felt bad about, you know, weaponizing toddlers for extortion, to which they replied, eh, we're not asking for an enormous amount, we deserve some compensation for our pen test. They were after £600,000 in Bitcoin, but Kiddo still wasn't playing ball, so the hackers resorted to quite literally calling the parents of the kids, after all, they had all their contact information from the breach, encouraging them to put pressure on Kiddo to pay up, or else all their children's data would be leaked. But there was a slight problem for Radiant. Because they were so new, I mean, Kiddo was quite literally their first victim, they didn't know one of the unwritten rules of cybercrime. Try not to make a scene. If you go after kids, critical infrastructure, or hospitals, then mainstream media is bound to pick up the story, and all of a sudden, law enforcement is now very motivated to make an example of you. Radiant realized this, eventually, and totally backtracked. They removed all the data from their leak site, giving the crappy excuse that one of their affiliates had gone and done this without their authorization. They also spoke to the media, saying how sorry they are and that they've deleted all the stolen data. But this came way too late. Police were already onto them and two 17-year-old boys were arrested and remain in custody for questioning. Next up, your mouse might not just be some innocent peripheral after all. Researchers have figured out how to turn mice into covert spy devices. The premise here is that recently mice have advanced to the point where their sensors are so sensitive that they can quite literally act as microphones and be used to record nearby conversations. The researchers are calling this the Mickey Mouse attack, and it works like this. When you speak near a mouse, the sound of your voice vibrates your table, which the sensor in your mouse detects as what looks like unintelligible noise. But after the researchers put this through their special blend of signal processing and machine learning, they were able to recover their original audio with a surprising degree of accuracy. Here's what this all sounds like in practice. One, two, Sure, it's not the clearest thing in the world, and I'm definitely not going to start recording these videos with my Razer mouse anytime soon, but the recovered audio is accurate enough to make out what's being said. But exactly how accurate depends on things like how loud you're talking to your mouse, the surface it sits on, and more importantly, how sensitive the sensor in your mouse is. The researchers tested a whole array of mice, finding that mice with a DPI of over 20,000 are vulnerable here. And given the technological progress curve of mice over the past few years, generally speaking, mice made after 2020 are way more likely to be vulnerable. So if you're still rocking your IntelliMouse from 2003, you can breathe a sigh of relief. But if you have got something a bit more modern, for an attacker to do this, they would of course need to infect your PC with malware. But that challenge is made easier by the fact that security software isn't anywhere near as protective about reading mouse input compared to your actual microphone. This Mickey Mouse attack is an example of a side channel attack, as in an attack that exploits unintentional data leakage from the normal operation of something. Every few months, some obscure new side channel attack makes the news, but like most of those, this Mickey Mouse attack realistically won't see much use by hackers in the real world. There's quite a few different variables that could totally derail this attack, and practically speaking, it's hard to see how you'd ever be able to exploit this at any meaningful scale. 
That being said, intelligence agencies are known to go to extreme lengths to make the weirdest of bugs. So who knows, maybe Mickey Mouse has a future with a three letter agency. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.